In this video, I'm going to show you how to edit viral hooks in DaVinci Resolve. We're just going to focus on the hook. We're not going to edit the whole thing. I'm just going to show you the techniques that you can use to make your hooks engaging and also get the attention of the user so that they stick around to watch the whole video. So let's get started. Now, right here, I have created this timeline and the settings for this timeline is 30 frame rates per second. So you can just go ahead and get any settings that you want. By the way, you can also do this same thing for any other video, any other long form video as well. But since we're talking about reels specifically or short form content, we're just going to focus on that and view this video from that perspective. Now, right here, once you have the timeline done, of course, you can get different assets. But the thing is, no matter what assets you use, this is not about the assets used in the video. It's about the technique that a lot of people use, especially in their hook, or you can say the intro, to make that video engaging so that the user just gets hooked in and then they stay to watch the remaining of the video. But the only thing is, this is not going to teach you how to retain attention later on in the video. This is just so that you can get the user in after they watch the, let's say, first three seconds of your video, or let's say five seconds of the video. For this one, the process is simple. All you need is relevant images that are related to what's being talked about in the video. So for example, I have this, I have these images, and the video was about talking about, you know, just short form videos. So this was just a reel I did, and I was just talking about short form videos. So I wanted to show show that, I wanted to show content. So what, what I did was I went ahead and downloaded these images for different content creators, and I'm just going to use them to get that click effect, that rapid click effect. And that's what we're going to do in this video. But of course, feel free to use any images that you want. The main thing that you need to focus on is the process. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go over to the effects. And in the generators, let's go ahead and drag in this solid color. And I'm just going to change the color to something like this. And let's go back to the media pool. So now I'm just going to go over to 20 frames. So right here, we're just going to keep this very short. So let's just go maybe let's say 25 frames or something. Or let's just go with 24 frames. So the main thing to note is to keep it short. But this is going to be a very good length for this intro. Because the thing is that if you make it too long, then it's just going to be, it's just going to get too much. And if you make it a little short, it's not going to look good. So this is the perfect spot that I found when I was editing this. So right now, just change your length of the solid background to 24 frames right here. And now we're going to go over to effects, drag in the fusion composition, and let's cut this right here. All right. And now we're going to break this down into four frames. So we're going to create different fusion compositions depending on the images. So right now I just have six images. Yeah, so I'm going to make six different fusion compositions. So I'm going to start from right here at the beginning. Let's move four frames ahead and just reduce this. And now let's, let me just show you that if we make some copies. So for example, right here. So, so we have six copies as you can see right here. And now you can see the frame that we selected. So 24 frames, this was perfect for this sort of a sequence, image sequence, because it divides it perfectly. So right now I'm just going to delete these ones for now. And let's right click and open in Fusion page, drag in a background and connect this with the media out. And now let's drag in this rectangle mask and connect this with the background. And also let's change the corner radius to let's say 0.2 or 0.3. Actually, let's keep this at 0.2 and for the length, let's keep this at 0.7 and the height at 0.8. So just like this. And now what we need to do is we can go ahead and change the background color. So we're going to have a different background color and also a different image that we're going to select from this section right here from the, our media images. And we're just going to make different images or, and different background for each fusion composition that we're going to create, but we're going to just use this composition, this one composition, and we're just going to copy this. So right now, let me just go back to the timeline and I've already made this. 
So this is just so that I can select the background colors. So right now, this background color, let me just select this. All right, so let me just go ahead and change the background color to this color code. And of course, you can use any other colors that you want, but these are the ones that I'm going with. And now I'm going to drag in the first image. So this is going to be one, be the one. So let me just change the size for this. Bring this down. And this looks good. You don't have to do anything. You just need to place the image. And this is the first image. Now we're just going to create a copy. You can press Alt on the keyboard and drag this. So this will create a copy. Now let's right click, click on open in Fusion page. And now, first of all, I'm going to just change the color. So let's change the color to this color code. And let me just remove this image and let's just go ahead and drag in another image. So let's just drag in this one. And right now I'm just going to reduce this a little bit, bring this down and that's it. So right now, this is how it looks. And again, I'm just going to copy this. And this is just the same process. I'm just going to repeat the same process that I just did. So I'm just going to quickly do this now, but you get the point, right? You just need to change the background color for each of them and also the image. So let's just quickly do that. All right, so I went ahead and I added all these images, changed the background. So right now, if I play this, this is how it looks. And now what we need to do is we need to just combine this, all of this into one single clip. But before we do that, let's also go ahead and add it our sound effects because later on it will be quite difficult to locate, locate where to add it. So right now, wherever we have a image coming in, we're just going to add in this sound effect. So camera shutter click, you can use that. Any camera click sound effect you can use. There you go. And also one other thing is to just lower this a little bit because it depends on your voiceover as well or your footage, the background footage or the talking head video, whatever is going on in the background. And now we can combine this into a compound clip. So what we can do is we can select all of these, select all of them, right click and click on new compound clip. Let's just call this intro or intro sequence, whatever you want to call this. And now if we right click, and go over to open in Fusion page. Or actually, you don't really need to go over to the Fusion page. You can do this. What I'm, about, what I'm about to show you, you can also do it from the transform. So right here, actually right here at the very end at 24, let's go ahead, create a keyframe at zoom. And let's go over at zero, or you can say the beginning. And let's just increase this so that this covers the whole screen. So if you play this, this is how it looks. And also let's go over to the keyframes select your footage and go over to this. This is called keyframe curves. You need to go over to this one. You can just press control A to select all of the keyframes or the two keyframes that we just created. And you need to go over to this right here. So right now it says linear, but if you click over here, you will be able to change this to, let's say, change, let's change this to ease in and out. So right here, this is how it looks. So yeah. So yeah, this, this is how it looks, but of course you can go ahead and change this even further. So yeah, this curve right here, I just changed this and this looks a little bit more good, more better. All right, so we have the main thing done. We have the animation done. And now all we need to do is just add in a riser effect as well. So over here in my assets i also have this metallic riser you can just go ahead and use any riser as well let me just go ahead and make sure that this comes in right here all right so this is okay and we can just make sure that this is covering the whole thing so you see so this is a nice intro especially if you're going for motion graphics in the beginning and of course like you need to lower the volume of the riser as well depending on the footage you need to balance it but this works for me this is one of the technique that i found very useful especially if you're working with motion graphics in your videos so i hope you found this video useful and i will see you in the next one